Footnote number one. A qualified doctor will confirm that two other qualified doctors have confirmed that the body is actually dead. Dead. Brown bread. The end. The dark. Done and dusted. Kicked the bucket. When the big fella calls and your number's up, like bingo, like Tesco, when it's gone, it's gone. You've passed on. It's the one big certainty in life. You are going to die. But I'd like to believe there's something else, something, you know, on the other side. The soul, the spirit. What happens to that little bit that's me? It must go somewhere because energy can never be destroyed. Footnote number two. The body needs to be in a box or basket not just wrapped in a set of curtains. It must be able to slide, must be less than 41 inches wide. Buy it online, cardboard, willow, bamboo, pine. A puck a new one, an already used one. Choose one from Argos, digitally printed with a personalized design, a bus or a train, Batman, Darth Vader. Someone made a coffin with like a bottle of cider. A Halloween themed with vampires and spiders, pen shaped for writers, books for readers, pink torpedoes for those with unflaggable libidos. <laughs> or go to Alabama where they like a bit of glamour, commission an embalmer who will have no dilemma whatsoever about displaying you in a glass case in your favourite pose. On a motorbike with your hand on the throttle, dancing on the table, brandishing a bottle, that way you'll never decompose. But if you want to save some money and you don't want nothing funny, then chipboard's fine. Whack in the nails, wipe off the glue, they sell what you need down at B&Q. It's not a mystery. Paint something, a whale from your family history, then bring it down the creme in the back of the van. The important thing is you make a plan. Footnote number three. A wreath of exotic flowers flown in for a funeral costs around £150. While growing in our hedgerows, spread across our meadows, unspiralling ferns, dandelions, celandines, we have this moment of colour. We are sweet peas. We are Japanese anemones, jasmine and peonies. Just for a moment, ephemeral, like flowers, and then we are gone. A swag, a posy pad, hessian scrim, raffia string, hebes and hellebores, hawthorn and honeywort, thistle, petals of bluebells, snow, snowdrops and willows, and forget-me-nots, and stocks and oaks and oxeye daisies, garden roses, forget-me-not. For six days, he kept her dead, next to their bed. Every night he kissed her, then read his Kindle. Flowers fade. We just have this one moment of colour. Footnote number four. Dress your loved ones the way you wish, but not in wellies. Cotton is best. Some wear their glasses, feathers and buttons, layers of memory, a memento mori telling stories of their life. Calico and handmade lace, a rusted metal case of grandfather's stencils, his pencils and old sepia photos of his wife, his mother, his sister, and the one on the left whose name we can't remember, handed down, an embroidered cloth, we sing the hymns they sang. We walk the streets they walked. It's like an echo. Pass on. Be gentle. They are fragile like a moth. A remembered face. They leave their imprints in the fabric of the place. It's like an echo, like radio waves. <coughs> I talk to them. I give them a nod. Sometimes he's at the bottom of my bed. Three knocks on the front door like an echo. Footnote number five. 
the cremator is computer operated. It can be remotely controlled from the Midlands if need be. <laughs> the chamber is charged to 800 degrees. We don't talk, do we, in our society about death. But we only have a finite amount of breath. We're born, we live, and then we die. So why don't we talk about death? He's gone to sleep, she's passed away. We cross the road because we don't know what to say. We're scared. It's sad, tragic if they're young or they took their life. But we're scared in case we make them cry. Scared the tears are hot. It's nonsense. They want to talk. It helps undo the knots. Keep it, talking keeps them alive. My uncle came back. He was laughing, laughing because neither he nor I believe in the afterlife. But yet, there he was, roaring with laughter. Footnote number six. The fatter you are, the hotter you burn. <laughs> After the committal and the curtains have closed, the orange light shows back here, so we know it's fine to transfer the coffin to the charging beer. We check our card against the name, check it's the same, so we're sure who's inside. Then, we raise the door, slide it in. You can't dilly-dally, feel that heat, that'll go up to a, a thousand degrees. Come and watch through the glass, you'll see it ignite. We wait until the bones have gone white, completely white. They're clean then. One and a half hours? It all depends. A little old lady, perhaps an hour and ten. You do get attached to people. You can't help but feel when it's one of your friends. But we've all got to go. So I treat everyone as I'd like to be treated, from when they come in to when, the, when it's completed. It's a job, like yours. People get cremated. It's simpler now that it's automated. The gases and filters are regulated. It used to be manually operated, monitoring toxins, the dust, opening the flu. Oh, there's the orange light. Let's get the next one through. Footnote number seven. There are 206 bones in the average adult. Newborns have 350. The skeleton is a framework, cranium, clavicle, radius, mandible, on which other bodies are suspended, protected, or hung. Eyes, ears, hearts, lungs. Each one does its job. The lacrimal bone holds the tube that transports tears. Now, all the flesh has disappeared. All the organs have burnt off. The earlobes, taste buds, intestines, prostate, the ossicles, the testicles, the breasts and spleen, the penis and skin, the liver and bladder and kidney and gut, all gone. And the bones are white. My mum's got a collection of skulls, our cat, birds, sheep, whatever she sees. She calls it her death box. I hope I'll become compost, something new. We rake the bones into a drawer to cool. Footnote number eight. All false hip and knee joints will be recycled, unless you want to have your mum's knees back. The bones are brittle dry, but you still see how they fit. The bits of the spine, the ball and socket of the hip and knee. In a stainless steel bucket, we sift for artificial parts. A pair of glasses. You don't know. You never ask what they send their loved ones off in. Perhaps the undertaker left his scissors in the coffin. Bones don't burn to ashes in the heat. They're tough, like concrete. Could be centuries before they rot. We put them in the cremolator, and two minutes later they're ground like sugar grains. The last remains are poured into a pot. He was a first responder to accidents. He always said, you'll be fine. But that was a lie. One day, he changed his mind. 
a motorbiker, still conscious, a mess on the road, on the road, and he told him. He saw a profound feeling of peace as he held him in his arms and watched him die. Death is a part of life. They say it's dark, but I think it's light. Footnote number nine. Leave a bit of paper with it all scribbled down. It's time to let go. A birth into the unborn again. A new horizon, like bread rising. Raising a glass to an absent friend. A requiem. I can't decide. I'm terrified of fire, but I'm claustrophobic too, so I don't really know what I'm going to do. If they say what's true, if, they, if what they say is true, I'll go to heaven, wherever that may be, and be reunited with my family. We thought we'd be cremated, didn't we? But our daughter says no. I should have planned this years ago, before it's too late. Cheek coughing down the, down the pub, I want them laughing until their jaws ache. I want chocolate cake. I want the full works, the Jackie Kennedy horse-drawn hearse, the Wuthering Heights, the weeping and the wailing at my graveside. Put me in a Tesco bag, punch holes in the side, then tie me to a horse and take me for a ride. I want jokes and puns about stiffs and nuns, boffins and coffins, about rabbit vibrators and cremolators and people with a passion for jacket potatoes. Put the volume on full with a deep-sounding bass and then shove me in a firework and send me out to space. Footnote number 10. Bread is the stuff of life. The yeast keeps rising like the sun in the east, loaf after loaf, singing the songs they sang, warming the hearths they warmed. It's like an echo in the fabric of the place. We are embroidered cloth. We are moments of colour, fragile as a moth. put into it because it's your words that I'm giving back to you. I really, really enjoyed this you know, this week that I've had here, meeting everybody here and over the course of the week. So thank you. Thank you.